Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, Shifu. How are you today? Very good. Let's see. Okay, so what shall we do now? Today we have a the topic on the Buddha's qualities <clears throat> continuation part two. Uh, Buddha has many qualities. And as a result of these qualities, uh, he's able to do certain things. And sometimes it's because he's able to do certain things, that's why he is known to have these qualities. Yeah. For example, he is known to be a, an, uh, the teacher of, of gods and men. Yeah. Uh, this is a quality of his. Yeah. Uh, because he's able to teach, then he's given this so called title. Uh, but because of various qualities of his, he is respected by the people, you know? he is honored by the people. So he is also known as the world honored one, and so on. Yeah. <coughs> so, can you hear me? Cannot. Okay. Is my video clear? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was told that the morning sit for a few days is a bit blurred. Yeah, I, I also noticed this morning. So I wiped the webcam. So now it's clear. So when we attend Dharma class, it's like wiping our eyes. <laughs> yeah, usually we wipe the whole world. Attend Dharma class, we wipe our eyes to be clear. So, what other qualities does the Buddha have? Let's take a look. So, we stop here. Uh, I think we stop here, right? At the Yun He Ming Sing Chu, we finish this. Then, um, on to the Yun He San Shi. So, just now when we were doing the puja, we also recited these verses. No? Uh, but you will notice, as I've mentioned before, the verses are not exactly one-to-one. -one, no? uh, in part because perhaps due to translation, but also because uh, the different, uh, in different perhaps texts, then the, the way the, the qualities are combined or not is different. So let's take a look. In her San Shi Sugata. Uh, so again, in the in in the Pali text, you would sometimes see the text as Sugato. Yeah. So because singular one, then it's Sugato. No? Uh, but oftentimes we also just put Sugata as a root word. So for Yen. Ji Miao Wang Zi Yi Ru Tan Chen Shi Den Ying Zhu Yu Qing Wang Wang Bi E Qi Fei Ming San Shi Ru Lai Zhen Shi Nen Duan Zhu Huo Miao Chu Miao Chu Shi Jian Nen Wang Fu Guo Gu Ming San Shi Yeah, so uh. The translation, the, the not translation. So in this sutta, the Buddha explained, uh, miao wang si yi. Yeah, so, uh, yin he san shi. so what is me meant by this particular epithet? Yeah, san shi, uh, well gone. Yeah, uh, so what, is it, what does it mean? Uh, ji miao wang si yi. Yeah, so 
uh, loosely translated, uh, marvelous going. Yeah, the meaning uh, of which is this. In what way is it marvelous going or good going? Uh, so, Ru Tan Chen Si Den Ying Zhu Yu Qing Wang Di De Qi Fei Ming San Si. So, who are the one who is known as uh, well gone? And who are the one who is not known as well gone? So sentient beings over here, yeah, Zhu Yu Qing. So for all the sentient beings, the unenlightened beings, um, where do we go towards? Those sentient beings that is um, uh, guided by greed, guided by hatred, guided by delusion, yeah. Greed, hatred, and delusion. Of course, sometimes the translation is a bit different. Now. Sometimes they translate as desire, uh, aversion, uh, and delusion is quite common. Yeah. Sometimes uh, some texts put as ignorance, but ignorance should be uh, the, the wounding. Uh. So if one is guided by the defilements, yeah, then what happened? It will draw you, it would compel you. Yeah. Uh, so induce us to compel us to draw us to do what towards what Wang Bi yeah uh, so towards the evil destination yeah. towards the evil destination what are the evil destination uh, yeah. towards the hell realm towards the hungry ghost realm, towards the animal realm. In the Pali canon, they usually put the ghost realm first, then animal, then the hell realm. No? So uh, lead us towards the lower realms. Yeah? So in which case then, Fei Ming San Shi. In this case then, this is not known as well gone. Yeah? Because it's ill gone. <laughs> Uh, you are going towards a uh, evil destination, painful destination, suffering destination. Yeah. So um, here it says Ru. Yeah, in front it has a Ru. Yeah. So it's the contrast here. Just as sentient beings, they go according to their mental inclination. Because of defilements, they go to lower realms. Yeah. So not named as well gone. So likewise, then what happened? Uh, so the Buddha, yeah, the Tathagata, the right knowledge uh, and wisdom, is able to eradicate, uh, eradicate what? Zuhuo, all the different taints, all the different bewilderness. Yeah, in other words, the defilements. Miao Chu Sun is able to in a very uh, amazing way, in a very profound way, uh, uh, be be free of the worldly. Yeah. In other words, to to leave samsara. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean to leave samsara? What does it mean to be free of the worldly? Uh, does it mean that we go somewhere else from this planet? We go to Mars. <laughs> yeah, quickly sign up for the Mars program. Yeah, Elon Musk is looking for people to volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, so it means to to be free of the worldly attitudes. To be free of the worldly uh, uh, states. Yeah, although you are in the midst of the worldly, yeah, uh, interacting with worldly people, living your life among the worldly, but you don't relate in the worldly way. Yeah, why? Because you remove the your the the taints, 
we remove the bewilderments, we will remove the defilements. In other words, you purify yourself. So when you purify yourself, then even though you are in the worldly, you are not worldly anymore. No? Uh, in other words, not suffering anymore. Free of the causes of suffering. So, then one for work. And so then is able to, able to do what? To go towards the Buddha food. Yeah, the fruit, fruition of a Buddha. Hu Ming San Shi. And hence his name, uh, the well gone one. Oh, well gone one. In the worldly way, in the Chinese custom, we also have a, a saying simil somewhat similar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I don't think it's meant to mean the same thing. Hmm. But in a way, we can ask ourselves, uh, if we use Buddhism to think about it, then we can also say whether a person you know so how. Yeah. If a person in the day-to-day -day life uh, observe uh, and practice the 10 wholesome deeds, yeah, uh, upholds right view, maintains purity in the body, speech, and mind, then surely we can say this person, when the person passed away, ilu uh, eating so how. Eating so how. Yeah. Uh, so, and and don't have to worry whether the person died in this way or that way. Yeah. Uh, why? Because uh, we know that if a person has been conducting himself or herself in a wholesome manner, then surely that continue the continuum yeah, of, uh, of inclination towards wholesomeness will bring the person towards wholesome destination, yeah, happy destination. Or if not, yeah, towards various stages of liberation. So next, in her Jie, Wu Sang Shi. So over here, the Wu Sang, yeah, Wu Sang Shi. This part is actually a, a separate one. Uh. But over here, it seems to be together. Uh, but if you look at the text, uh, you'll be, uh, over here, there's a separation also. So, uh, loka widow, yeah. So in the Pali text, there's a loka widow, and then anutara, yeah. And in our in the text that we recite, yeah, in the text that we recite, it is anutaro purisa dhamma sarati sata deva manusanam, yeah. So, uh, the the anutara is combined with the later text, the next one. Oh, uh, but over here is with the earlier one. So let's take a look. Oh. So, yun he si jian jie, wu shang shi. So the two epithets is loka widow and anu taro. Yeah, again, uh, in the, uh, if you go by grammar, singular would be anu taro. Oh. So in the in various sutra, sometimes you hear Aneo Tolo, Samyao Samputi, Aneo Tolo, Anu Taru. Anu Taru. Yeah, not Anu, but Aneo Tola. Aneo Tolo. Helen, you have you want to ask something, is it? Yes. Anoa. Oh, I thought you were. Eh? <laughs> Uh, stretch your hand, like right? you all need to stretch your hand, stretch, stretch, stretch left side, then stretch right side. So, uh, loka, loka is world, widow, uh, loosely translated as no, knower. Yeah, so loka, widow, knower of the world. Yeah, anu taro, uh, unsurpassed, uh, unsurpassed. So, for yen, si jian ze. And so on. Yeah. So this is a reply to the question. Yeah. So the Buddha's reply. Uh, so what is meant by the world, world uh, knower of the world? 
Yeah, so the Buddha replied in two parts. The first part, Si Jian Zhe. So this is part one. This is part two. No? Part A1, A2, then B. So this is part A1. So when we say knower of the world, first of all, what is world? Yeah, so first of all, can be classified as in three. Yeah, there are three worlds to be known. Yeah, first the sensual desire realm, then the form and formless realm. Uh, so these are the three realms. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the sensual desire. Realm, the form realm and formless realm. So this three, this three realm are named uh, based on uh, the inclination, the the preoccupation of sentient beings. Yeah. In other words, sentient beings who are who are inclined towards sensual desire, who are preoccupied towards sensual desire, are then reborn in this realm. Yeah, because of their inclination. It doesn't mean that they will get their central desire. <laughs> it just means that they were in the past inclined towards that. And then according to whether they have merits or not, they may have their central desire fulfilled. Form and formless realm, similarly, accordingly, they are inclined towards, they are, they are preoccupied with form and preoccupied with formless. Yeah. So they are respectively uh, achieved by those who practice the, the concentration that is based on physical form yeah, and those who are based on the formless attainments. Uh, so the Rupa Jhana and the Arupa Samadhi. So next, then we go into slightly more detail. Yeah. So here, just listing out the lower realms, the hell. Yeah, here we list out hell. Then we have the ghost realm. No? So, uh, ghosts, or we can say hungry ghosts. And then we have the animal realms. No? So tan lei, yeah, etc. Yeah. Uh, so all the various types, etc. Yeah. So uh, they uh, uh, respectively they they comprise yeah, each of them comprise uh, form. Aggregates, yeah. This in is uh, the what we call the aggregates, no? So skandhas or kandas, yeah, or what we say in English aggregates, yeah, like PSLE aggregates called the aggregate, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this word means a heap, yeah, uh, a lot of things combined together. Yeah, so form, feelings. Yeah, so we have forms, we have feelings, and I've mentioned many times feelings here refers to uh, sensation. No, then xiang, uh, perception. Then we have sing, sing. Uh, we can say is volition. No, we can also say it's mental formation. Yeah, and then we have consciousness. Oh, hang on. Uh. Consciousness. Okay, so we have five aggregates. Then we have yen, and also further in more detail, we have yen a pi sa sen yi, sa sen xiang wei chu fa. Oh. So, uh, so yen a pi sa sen yi, these are the six sense bases the eye, uh, eye sense base, ear sense base, no sense base, tongue sense base body sense base, mind sense base, yeah. 
，既比六世所缘境啊等一切诸法。So， 既比 and， 呃、uh, ，their respective what respective six sense base 啊、uh, six sense consciousness， 呃、uh, ，所缘境界。So the eye sense base。Can give rise to eye consciousness. Ear sense sense base can give rise to ear consciousness. Nose sense base nose consciousness. Tongue sense base tongue consciousness. Body sense base bodily consciousness. Mind sense base bodily um、uh, mental consciousness. No, mind sense base mental consciousness. So each of these sense base respectively is uh linked to its own domain of uh. Uh, sense object, no, so yuan jing, yeah, liu shi so yuan jing, yeah. So there's a sixth sense base, a、uh, sixth sense base consciousness or sixth sense consciousness, yeah, corresponding to its own uh sense object, no,、uh, which is what, ah, uh, sense sense way chu fa, ah, sense sense way chu fa, ah, yeah, be sense sense yi sense 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 way chu fa. Then together with the liu shi, together will be sixth jie, no. So here, 等一切诸法 ，yeah. So etc.、Uh, all these various phenomena, yeah. Together, all this is known as, ah,、uh, known as what? 明月明月世间 is known as the world, yeah. So 正觉之明世间界 ，yeah. So 正觉正知 ，sorry, 正觉正知明世间界。So knowing clearly, yeah,、uh, having right, right、uh, awareness and knowing, yeah,、uh, of all this is known as 世间界 yeah, it's known as someone who knows the world. Okay, in、uh, in other suttas where the Buddha give a bit more detail, then fur further clarification to this, it is that the Buddha knows. All the different realms, all the different states, yeah, uh, the peculiarities of each of them, yeah, including, uh, the way the sentient beings exist in all these different realms, the kind of uh pleasure they they enjoy, the kind of suffering they face, yeah, including, uh, the origin of this realm, yeah. So how does a person get reborn into The central desire realm. How does a person? How does a sentient being rather get reborn in the form realm, formless realm? What's the distinction between all the various sub realms inside? And how is it that one person get reborn in this state and not in that state? The Buddha knows in details. Yeah. So the Buddha know all the different realms, know its origin, and also know how each of these realm come to an end. And the Buddha knows the way. Of how these realms come to an end, in other words, the four noble truths of the various realms. <laughs> yeah, they all realize. Yeah, if you even look at Sutra, right? Ah,、uh, some of the translation already come out in the framework, so you eh you see the the marker. Yeah, ah,、uh, the basically is the four noble truths. What is X? The origin of X, the cessation of X, and the path leading to cessation of X. Now this is the four noble truth framework. Ah.、Uh, You usually think four noble truths is just about suffering, right? Yeah,、uh, but we say this can be applied also to the different worlds. No, so in this way, the Buddha is known as the knower of the world. Yeah, and so、uh, by knowing how this world, what how this world is, how this world come about, how this world come to an end, and the way leading to the end of this world. Yeah,、um, he teach us.、Um, According to our wishes, if you wish to be reborn in a human state, he can teach you how to be reborn in a human state. If you wish to be reborn in a sensual desire realm, to to enjoy sensual desire in the heavenly realm, he is able to teach you accordingly, guide you accordingly. Yeah. Ah,、uh, if you want to avoid <laughs> rebirth in the lower realm, he can teach you how to avoid rebirth in the lower realm. Yeah. Ah.、Uh, I I I haven't seen any sutta where the Buddha say, "Oh, there's someone who wants to be reborn in lower realm." Then he say, "Okay, since you ask so many times, I teach you." 
<laughs> I never hear of this. Uh. Uh, so towards the wholesome, the pleasant realm, the happy realm, he teach you how to uh, assure yourself rebirth in that state. Towards the lower realms, he closed the door for you. Yeah, He opened the door towards the ha wholesome, happy realm. He closed the door for the lower realms. Uh. <clears throat> But the trouble is, we are itchy finger. Yeah, we always like to look at the door that is closed. Hey, how come this door is closed? Huh? Huh? How come? Huh? What is inside there? We take a look. <laughs> uh, we're very curious. Yeah, the door that people open for us. Why? Why? Why everybody want to walk here? Why? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Why? 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 Why cannot do? <laughs> Uh, we want to to go and look. Hey, how about this door? Hmm, how about that door? Uh, so next, 又比世间所有二足四足多足无足欲见欲色足天有想无想非有想非无想若凡若圣一切有情之中为佛第一最俗上无等 <coughs> so this is the second part. Yeah. So this part is B. Uh, so this part is B. So just now I mentioned A1 yeah, is the first part. Then this part is A2. And then this part is B. Uh. Yeah. So further, uh, so if you look at this sutra, right, the they put together because then with respect to whatever has been mentioned, all the different world, okay? In all this different world, there are sentient beings of the various types. Yeah. So this B refers to the world that has been just mentioned, that has just been mentioned, yeah? Uh, and within this, this all this world, yeah? What about it? So there are various... Uh, sentient beings. They are among which there are those that is two-footed. Yeah, two, two, two-footed. Si-zu, four-footed. Yeah, duo-zu, multi-footed. Yeah, and there are those without feet. Yeah, without any feet at all. Yeah, like snakes. Yeah, or dragon. Chinese dragon have legs on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some uh some traditions the dragons have no legs. Yeah. So Wu Zhu, yeah, no legs. Yeah. Uh, yu se zhu tian. So here, Yu se zhu tian. So the uh here referring to the heavenly realm, the sensual desire, heavenly realm, the form world, the heavenly realm. <clears throat> yeah. Then besides that, yeah, you xiang wu xiang, fei yo xiang, fei wu xiang. Yeah. So here. Here basically referring to to include all the formless states. Yeah. Yo xiang wu xiang, Yeah. So this actually is very interesting because this section here actually encompasses all the realms. Yeah. Uh, up to the higher level where even perception is being uh, quietened. Yeah. And then there's one state which is fei yo xiang, fei wu xiang. Uh, so this. This I can't go into detail uh, because otherwise we'll be going into the full <laughs> explanation of the formless states. Yeah, there are four formless states. Remember, yeah, uh, So the fei xiang fei fei xiang chu ding is the last one. Uh, so yo xiang wu is covering the first three, including the uh, form and the form uh, form and the essential. Yeah, form and central are all considered yu xiang. Yeah. Then uh, besides that, so you have all the different classification, then up to even classification, ruo fan, ruo shen. So this is uh, uh, strictly spe speaking, fan is commoner, yeah, the common ones, yeah, or the worldlings. In other words, the unenlightened one.
Then Ruo Shen. So this would be the enlightened one. So again, uh, the word Shen, the original term will be Arya, and a common translation is noble. Yeah, so if you here you use noble, then the contrast <laughs> not strong enough. Huh? <laughs> also, Chinese we use the word sin. So whether you are enlightened or unenlightened, yeah, among all these different beings that is uh, that exist in this world, each yeah, all the sentient beings within of of uh, of which Wei Fu Di Yi Zui Shang Wu Den, yeah. So he is the he is the number one supremo numero one, <laughs> yeah. Uh, satu satu orang tao zhu tao ah the only one, yeah. Uh, and he is what Zui Shang Wu Den. Nobody is his equal, yeah. Ning Wu Shang Shi, yeah. Ning Wu Shang Shi. Actually. More strictly speaking, uh, if you look at various texts, it's not just that he's unequal, but that no one surpasses him also. No, no one surpasses him. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, uh, he's unsurpassed in various, various ways. Yeah. He's unsurpassed in his wisdom. He's unsurpassed in his compassion. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether if you ask him to to like let's say uh play Minecraft whether you can surpass him or not. <laughs> uh, uh, so you so I, I'm I'm not trying to be funny here. Uh, maybe I am, <laughs> but the important point here is sometimes when we look at the Buddhist teaching, whether describing the Buddha or the Dharma, sometimes people have the kind of uh over expectation of the Buddha. Over expectation of the Dharma, with then we 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 actually impose onto the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha our own narrative, our own idea, yeah. But of which the Buddha never claimed to be also, yeah. So for example, some people say that oh the Buddha knows everything, yeah. But there's no evidence in the Buddha's time whether he know about internet or not, yeah. There's no evidence in the sutta whether the Buddha know about the quantum physics or not. Yeah, uh, but he he did say in one of the sutta, the Simsapa leaves. He did say he pick up a handful of leaves in the forest and then he asked the monks, which one is more? Is the hands my leaf? Uh, is the hands in my leaves? <laughs> are the are the leaves in my hand more or the leaves in the forest more? Then the monks say, of course, uh, the hands in the leaf is less. The hands in the forest is more. Then the Buddha said, similarly, uh, the knowledge that the Buddha has attained, that the Buddha has, is more compared to the ones that he has taught you. Yeah. And why? While the Buddha is not a close-fisted uh, teacher, he's an open-handed teacher. That means he don't hold back. Yeah, so even in the Buddha's time, there were teachers who is like the Chinese, no? <laughs> Chinese, you know, the Chinese, uh, Hong, the, not Hong Kong, uh, Chinese uh, Kung Fu movie. Yeah? They teach, 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 always halfway, <laughs> they don't teach everything. Uh. Yeah. Uh, can someone write something? Oh, yeah. Sometimes they don't teach everything. They teach you halfway. They teach you 90%, 80%. So that they have something over you. But the Buddha is not such a teacher. As far as uh, he's concerned, he teaches you everything. But also not everything. Now he tells you he didn't teach you everything. But he teaches you everything that is needed to become liberated. Uh, that's the important thing. No? So perhaps, perhaps the other part, which is, which is all the things he know, maybe he know about internet. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we shouldn't assume that he know, yeah. Because if you think about it, um, the those scientists who came out of the internet, you, you you don't think refuge in those scientists, right? Right. So whether the Buddha knows how, how the internet work or whether the Buddha was able to invent internet or not, is inconsequential. Yeah, we take refuge in the Buddha because he is an awakened one. He is free of suffering. 
We take refuge in him because he is able to teach us, show us the way to lead towards suffering, end of suffering. Yeah. So this part is the important part. So as far as I'm concerned, he's unsurpassed in being able to teach us how to be free of suffering. Other things I'm not so concerned. Maybe he don't, maybe he don't know how to ride his bicycle. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But I, I like to think that with his wisdom and experience, ex he can access all his past experiences. But so even if he has never ride bicycle before, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe only in human history, we were the first cycle to invent bicycle. Maybe, uh, I like to think that if I can learn how to ride bicycle, I think Buddha maybe take a short time, maybe two seconds. Eh? Okay, can already. <laughs> But even if the Buddha don't know how to ride bicycle, doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, correct or not? You ask yourself, you, you meet two teachers. One teacher can teach you to be free of suffering. The other one know how to ride bicycle. The other one can only teach you to be half free of suffering. Yeah, but can teach you how to ride bicycle. Well. <laughs> Which one are you going to learn from? <laughs> Surely is the one who can teach you not the bicycle, <laughs> teach you how to be free of suffering, right? Uh, unless you're not interested in being free of suffering. You're more interested in learning how to ride bicycle. Uh, so then, whose fault is it? Nobody's fault. It's just incompatibility. Okay? Uh, so when we learn about this, that he's unsurpassed, you must know, uh, don't, don't, don't impute your own expectation. Uh. Yeah. Uh, maybe you like to ride bicycle. So you feel like, surely if I like bicycle so much, the Buddha should be very good in bicycle. And that's your problem. That's not the Buddha problem. Okay. So, Yun He Tiao Yu Zhang Fu, Purisa Dhamma Sarati, yes, then Tamer. Yeah. So, uh, so the, this, this epithet itself is basically uh, in a way, they are all linger. So, so what if you know about the whole world so much? So what if you are unsurpassed? Unsurpassed in what way? No big deal, lah. Huh? You are number one then. Uh, if you are not, if you are not able to help us, then <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a, a person who is very rich, yeah, a person who is very knowledgeable, but don't share with you the, the knowledge. Then okay, Lord, then you are just a knowledgeable person, no? Yeah. Then it's but it's useless to the rest of the world. Yeah, but he used his knowledge, he used his wisdom to tame those who can be tamed. Yeah, so here it's not control, huh? it's not control those who don't want to be controlled, it's to tame. Tiao Shun, Tiao Yu, uh, very gentle. Yeah, very, yeah, the anger is different. Yeah, but in the Sutta, the Buddha talked about, uh, described himself as the, uh, as the great tamer. Tamer of the wild horses, tamer of the wild elephant. Yeah, uh, he's able to tame those who are wild. Yeah, wild with what? Wild with defilements, wild with uh, all the habitual inclination. No? So let's take a look. For yet, so again, the Buddha replied, For si da zhang fu, er nen tiao yu san er er lei. So this is the opening. So the question is, in her tell you Zhang Fu, yeah. So who is the one? Uh, so here, here the Zhang Fu, yeah. So here the Zhang Fu is <clears throat> seems to be referring to the Buddha. That the Buddha is the one who is the tamer. Okay. So, uh, but sometimes, many times we we hear the explanation is that. Uh, Tiao Yu Zhang Fu is that he can tame those who are able to be tamed. Oh, so, but let's take a look. So, Fu Shi Da Zhang Fu, the Buddha is a great person. He also here a great person or great man. Uh, the Zhang Fu here, in Chinese Zhang Fu, today when we use it, right, is husband. <laughs> okay, uh, but Zhang Fu means someone who can do great things. Yeah, what does it mean? Yeah. Able to do what others cannot do. Yeah. Uh, so others cannot bear with hardship, you can bear. Others cannot sit still, you can sit still. Others, yeah, 能人, 他人所不能人, able to bear with 
what other people cannot bear. Yeah, other people get scolded immediately. Wow, want to fight back? <laughs> yeah, or the ascetics come and ridicule him, come and uh, insult him. He mean there are those ascetics who immediately wow get before that. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Then when people criticize him, immediately fight. Uh, but Buddha is not such a person. Yeah, able to endure, able to endure the heat, the cold, hunger, uh, and so on and so forth. Able to endure all this. Yeah. So most importantly, able to overcome uh, defilements, able to overcome suffering. Yeah. Uh, but uh, not everybody can do that. So someone who can do that is known as Da Zhang Fu. Hey, all the men, all the men here. So when your when your wife call you Zhang Fu, hey, this is a, an honor to be called Zhang Fu, no? You know, uh, it means that you before you get married, you're not called Zhang Fu. Uh, you get married, then there's one person in the world who call you Zhang Fu. So in other words, this person, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm using my own interpretation, uh, yeah. And using Buddhist interpretation quite good, you know. Then your wife is looking at you as the one person in the world who can do what other people cannot do, who can endure what other people cannot endure, yeah, who can achieve what other people cannot achieve, yeah. And why is it? <laughs> when your wife wants you to go and buy things, you are the only one who can go and buy. Other people cannot do it. <laughs> when your wife gives you nonsense, you are the only one who can enjoy it. Otherwise, other people cannot enjoy it. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether the Chinese way of calling the, sang, the husband sang fu, whether it has this meaning. Hey, but I think this meaning is quite good. Uh. <laughs> who can achieve what other people cannot achieve? What can the husband achieve? Can achieve the happiness of the wife. <laughs> Not bad. Uh. This interpretation may be quite good, but nothing to do with Buddhism. Uh, so forget about it. <laughs> so, yeah. So he is someone who can achieve all this. Uh, not not what I just described about husband. Uh. He can achieve the eradication of defilements. Who can uh, eradicate uh, suffering? But not that he just can do it himself. He can tame further the two types, those who, are, uh, those who are wholesome and those who are unwholesome, those who are good and those who are evil. He can teach them. He can tame them. Yeah. So first of all, yeah, so, so the, the bad person, yeah, the good and the bad, wholesome and unwholesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, san, san ye. Yeah. So, uh, zhe, qi, pu, san, san ye. so the evil one or the bad one yeah, give rise to three kinds of unwholesome karma. Yeah. What are the three kinds? Should be should be the body, speech, and mind. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, zhu, zhu, uh, yeah. So uh, give rise to three kinds of uh, uh, the kind of uh, unwholesome karma, then and do all kinds of wrong, then and fall onto fall into the hell realm, hungry ghost realm, pangsen, the animal realm. And obtain, obtain what? The bad uh, results, the bad retribution. So, yeah. so for the wholesome one, similarly also this tree, yeah? body, speech, and mind. But with body, speech, and mind, yeah? instead of doing evil, Cultivate all the uh, whole mass of wholesomeness. And as a result, and he attained the, uh, the meritorious fruit of human and heavenly rebirth. 
呀，此之善恶皆由心作，呀。So what has been、uh, has been described, yeah, this that which has been described, which are the wholesome, unwholesome, the good and the bad, 皆由心作，呀 ，are all、uh, conducted through the mind, yeah. 佛以第一义善涅盘之法，啊 ，so the Buddha、uh, make use of the、uh, the foremost meaning, the most supreme truth, yeah,、uh, of wholesome nibbana uh, uh, teachings. Oh,、uh, so to do what? 显示条语令理垢染 ，yeah, so. <coughs> To illustrate to the to these two categories of sentient beings, in other words, all sentient beings, yeah,、uh, and to tame them, yeah. So illustrate to them and then to tame them in order to do what? Ling li go ran, yeah. So to cause, yeah, cause these sentient beings to be free of go, free of run. <clears throat> so to be free of taints and defilements. Or、uh, go should be uh, run u go. Uh, actually, to can be seen together. So defilements and taints. Oh,、uh, to be free of defilements and taints.、Mm. The Buddha cannot remove our defilements and taints directly, but he can teach us. He can show us how to do it. Yeah, and in this way. When we do accordingly, we can be free of defilements and taints. 获得最上极净啊，极灭涅槃 ，and so that we can attain what we can obtain or attain the most uh the most supreme uh quietude cessation nibbana. Yeah. <coughs> In other words, attain the most supreme pari nibbana. 是故得名条鱼丈夫 ，and hence he is named as uh the 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 uh tamer uh, of those to be tamed, yeah tamer of those to be tamed. So this part is interesting. Ah,、uh, it is not that he just tamed the evil one, the good, the the bad one, and then the good one don't tame. <coughs> the good one he also tame. So this tells us something. Even if you are wholesome, you do good deeds. Yeah, you pure. You 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 are acting good. Do charity. This is insufficient. Yeah, because when you do charity, you observe precepts. You are just you are still in samsara. It's just that you are inclining towards the wholesome destination, but you are still in samsara. You are still not free of suffering. So the Buddha, by teaching us how to be free of defilements, to help us, show us how to、uh, purify ourselves, and in this way, to be truly liberated. So, Yun He Tian Ren Shi, Yun He Tian Ren Shi. So, what is meant by the teacher of heav heavenly beings and human, Satta Deva Manusanam? <coughs> teachers of gods and men, Fo Yan, Fei Yu An Nan, Yi Bi Chiu Wei Shi, So Yu Bi Chiu Bi Chiu Ni, Yu Po Sa Wu Po Yi, Ah Ji Tian Shang Ren Jian, Sa Men Po Lo Men, Mo Wang Wai Dao, Shi Fan Long Tian, Si Jie Gui Ming, Yi Jiao Feng Xing, Ju Zuo Fo Zhi, Gu Ming Tian Ren Shi. Uh, so this is just basically stating as it is. <clears throat>、uh, so what is this? So the opening is quite unique. In various teachings, this this phrase don't exist. Yeah,、uh, this phrase don't exist. So the opening phrase is unique. It says, "Fei yu an an yi bi chiu wei shi." So saying,、um, not just being a teacher、uh, for one、uh, big shoe. Yeah, as as. Anand, Venerable Ananda,、uh, not just being a teacher to Venerable Ananda, yeah, uh, uh, who is a big shoe, <coughs> not just that, yeah. So you be shoe, be shoe, ni. So this is be, uh, be shoe. So this is uh, uh, 
the transliteration yeah, of Bhikshu and Bhikshuni. Bhikshuni. <clears throat> so uh, these are the monks and nuns. So first the monastics, then Uposa, uh, Upoi. So here again is translated as Uposa, transliteration. That this is Upasaka. Uh, in some of the translation we see is Uposa, yeah, Upoi. Uh, but this will be closer in sound. Uposa, Upoi, yeah, Upasaka, Upasika. Yeah. So these are the human. Yeah, but these are the lay human. Together, these are all human. Okay, but this is monastic. This is lay. Oh, then Ji and and who else? Tian Sang Ren Jian, Sa Men Po Lo Men. So, uh, and in the heaven and within human realm, then we have what? Sa Men Po Lo Men. So we have the Sa Men. Sramana. So this are uh, referring to all the ascetics. Yeah. So going beyond just the uh, just the Buddhist Buddhist uh, monks and nuns. Yeah. So the ascetics, then including what? Oloman, the Brahmins. Mo Wang, even Mara. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and even the uh, White Tao, even those who are from other schools. Huh? Then we have this Si, si Ti Huan Ying, Fan, Fan Tian. Then we have the Long, the Naga. So Si Ti Huan Ying is, uh, should be the, is it Saka? Huh? Uh, yeah, this, this particular uh, God appeared in many sutras. He asked a lot of questions. Yeah. Then Fan, uh, Brahma, the, the great Brahma. Uh, then we have Long, the Naga, the, the, uh, this Long, uh, uh, Long, Long, Long. <laughs> uh, I think the it's another one of the category, yeah, under the also under heavenly side. Uh, then Tian, yeah. So all the different uh, uh, other heavenly beings not, not explicitly cited. Yeah, Si Jie Gui Ming. Yeah. So all of them would uh, take refuge. Yeah. Take refuge in the Buddha. Yeah, as the teacher. Then Yi Jiao Feng Xing. So every every time you all recite the precepts, then uh, so that you will practice accordingly to what has been taught. Yeah. So Jujo Yeah, and is complete uh, practicing or do, doing accordingly as a disciple of the Buddha. So Gu Ming Tian Ren Shi. So because all this individuals of various realms uh, from the heavenly realm to the human realm <clears throat> they take refuge in the buddha they practice accordingly and they are complete as the disciple of the buddha yeah on various stages so hence the buddha is known as the teacher of gods and men yeah <clears throat> notice here lower realms is not included hmm. Uh, lower realms not included. Why? Because those in the lower realms not able to uh, directly learn the teachings. They are not able to directly learn the teachings. Mm. Uh, I've seen sometimes YouTube or sometimes uh, actual individuals that I know. Uh, and like sometimes when you all attend Dharma class, then your doggy come and sit next to you, right? <laughs> Then we feel like, hey, my dog also attend Dharma class. Uh, strictly speaking, uh, I don't know. 
Okay, I must again admit, I haven't reached the stage where I can read people's mind, much less dog's mind. <laughs> uh, only those who can really read, can encompass, then can say, oh, no, uh, venerable. Uh, other dogs, I don't know, but this dog, I can quite clearly confirm. confirm. Uh, before the Dhamma talk, I look at the mind. The mind is always talking about where is the bone? Where is the bone? Where is the bone? <laughs> then after the Dhamma talk, eh, I, I see the, the, the dog's mind. Oh, body, feelings, mind, and mental objects. Oh, I see the, the dog's mind is comprising of oh, the eye form, eye consciousness, ear sound, ear consciousness, nose smell, nose consciousness, <laughs> and so on. Oh, I see then I see then I observe the dog. Oh, the dog hear the other dogs barking. Normally, hear the dog barking, then immediately, oh, now the dog hear the dog other dog barking, then in the mind of the dog arise hearing, hearing, hearing. So it's no more barking. Uh, if, if a person can really do that, then you can say, ah, so this dog, I don't dog, I don't know, but this dog really come and learn Dharma. <laughs> uh, uh, so, but other than that, at least uh, we say, uh, so plant some wholesome roots. Yeah. Uh, the dog as I uh, see the uh, wiki and miss dog behind. Uh, you, you check whether is it listening is the ear up or down. Yeah. Uh, sleeping, you see? So <laughs> so just a good feeling. <laughs> Maybe it's the first voice. Wah, wah, wah. At first alert, then wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Oh, but from the suttas, you can see that not easy. Yeah, lower realms, not easy. Oh. So in her Ming Fu, mm, so this is a name of the Buddha, an epithet of the Buddha that we use so commonly. So what does it mean? Yeah, so uh, we usually just, we don't tra translate this usually, we just leave it as Buddha. Yeah, and then singular is Buddha. Yeah. So what does it mean? An awakened one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in her Ming Fu, so the, uh, the knowledge and wisdom being complete. San Jue Yuan Ming, the three knowledges, the three knowing are all complete and uh, clear. So Si Gu Ming Fu and hence named as Buddha. So for Gao Anand, so the Buddha tells Ananda, yeah, yeah. So he says that in the uh, in the past, while well, he I think here is he was doing uh, maybe uh, on the journey or or walking meditation. So Yo Polo Men Erlai Wen Wo. So there's a Brahmin who come and ask him, yeah. Yeah. So there's a Brahmin who come and ask him, why is it that your, your parents call you the Buddha? Yeah. Uh, or name you a Buddha. Yeah. For Ji Da Yen, Si So the Buddha replied, Si Si Suo Zi Zhe Wo Nen Liao Zi. Yeah, that which the world can know, I am able to know. So, si so guan zhe wo yi nen guan. Whatever that the world can observe, I am able to observe. So, de mie zhe wo yi de mie. Whatever can be eradicated or can cease, I have, I am able to cease. Wo ju yi qie zi, yi qie liao zi. Yeah, I am complete with all the knowledges and all the knowing. So this this part is Chinese I explain. Uh. So So uh, from since uh, countless kapas, yeah. Uh, I have what? The Buddha has what? Zong Zong Xiu Xing. He has done all the different types of cultivation. Yuan Chen Li Gou. 
So this part is Chinese way of phrasing. Yuan Chen Li Go. Yeah. So it's actually Yuan Li. I don't know whether you all see this. This is Yuan Li, then Chen Go. Yeah. Uh, Yuan Li Chen Go. So that means it's far and free from uh, the, the different taints and defilements. But Chinese sometimes like to, uh, uh, then it sounds a bit more interesting. Okay. Uh, so, Yuan Chen Li Go. In other words, to be free and far from uh, the taints and defilements. So, Jing De Wu Sang Pu Ti, Gu Li Fu Hao. So now here, uh, attaining the unsurpassed uh, awakening, Gu Li Fu Hao, and hence establish this name uh, or this this epithet or name, uh, Buddha. Yeah. So it's quite interesting. Uh. The Brahmin in this sutta, a Brahmin is said to have asked, well, how come your, your parents named you this way? But the Buddha in his reply never talked about his parents. Yeah. Never talked about his parents. Right? Because his parents never gave his name. Yeah. What is the contrast? Usually our name is given by our parents. Right? Uh, and it is usually about what our parents wish us to be, uh, their hopes and dreams. But in this case, this name of his is not given by his parents. As, as, at least as far as I know, uh, the name given was Siddhartha, not, not the Buddha. Buddha, uh, from what I remember, uh, is when uh, so there was someone he encountered and he was asked, what are you? And he replied, awakened. Yeah. So since then, and over time, he became known as the awakened one, someone who is awakened. Yeah. But you will recall in some of the suttas that I shared, others initially also, there are those who refer to him as ascetic Gotama. Right. Uh, so, in other words, the uh, Gotama, the the ascetic, that means the cultivator, the practitioner, uh, and he, then his clan name, you know, his uh, family name. Family name is Gotama. Yeah? Clan name is Sakya. Uh, hmm. So next, Yun He Si Jun. I think this is the last already. Bhagavan Lokanto, yeah, world honored one. So, for Yen, Wo Yu Ying Di, Zi Shen Guan Cha, Suo Yu San Fa, Jie Fa, Xing Fa, Zi Hui Fa. Okay, so the reply, yeah, what is meant by, uh, oh, Yin He Si Zun, what is meant by World Honored One? Yeah, so Wo Yu Ying Di. So, this is what? The causal ground. Causal ground, causal stage. Huh? What is a causal stage? So causal stage is referring to the Bodhisattva path. It's, it's also named as causal because it is what causes the arising of Buddhahood. With respect to Buddhahood as the fruit, then Bodhisattva path is the causal stage. Huh? In deep. So, this is the Bodhisattva stage. So, well, while the Buddha was at the causal stage, the Bodhisattva stage, zi shen guan cha, shuo you san fa. So, he thoroughly contemplated and uh, he thoroughly observed yeah, all the various, all the wholesome dharma, yeah, uh, such as the jie fa, xing fa, yeah, including the what uh, the precepts, the uh, mind, and then the wisdom. Uh, what is this actually? Uh, so this sing fa is actually referring to the practice of thing. Yeah, concentration. Because when we practice concentration, 
it is basically doing the preliminary purification of the mind. Yeah. Uh, so TFR is actually purifying the body and speech. And then the concentration is purifying the initial stage of the mind. And then wisdom is purifying the view, which is which will then complete the purification of the mind. Because the mind, if you split into greed, hatred, and delusion, concentration, purify, or subdue the greed and hatred, then when you purify the view, you purify the delusion and ignorance. Uh, so, Fu Guan Tan Deng, Fu San Zi Fa. So, further, now Fu, further, he, con he observed uh, the, the unwholesome phenomena, the unwholesome Dharma, yeah, such as greed, etc. Yeah. So, Nen Zhao Zhu Yo Sen, Mie Ten Ku. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, all the unwholesome uh, phenomena or dharma that can bring about all the various, uh, various what, all the various states of suffering. Yeah, the birth and death and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, yi wu lo zi po bi fan nao. So, uh, but then he. When he observed the wholesome and then the unwholesome, yeah, uh, and he observed how the unwholesome can bring about all the various suffering, the whole mass of suffering, then he make use of what? <coughs> he make use of the, this wulo. Without outflow. If something is without with outflow, then it leads to pains, it leads to suffering. Without outflow means it doesn't lead to pains, it doesn't lead to suffering. Uh, so the wisdom that doesn't lead to suffering, doesn't lead to defilement, in the, then he used this kind of wisdom to do what? Poor be fun now. Yeah, he used it to vanquish, to eradicate, to... Um, yeah, to eradicate uh, the corresponding defilements, uh, corresponding to that which brings about suffering. And as a result, the Wu Sang Jue, and he then attained, yeah, or obtained the unsurpassed awakening. Uh, so just now we already learned the Wu Sang, uh, a lot of different Wu Sang, not just one, uh, a lot of things that he is unsurpassed, including this awakening, he is unsurpassed. Yeah, so, uh, and hence, as a result, heavenly beings, the human, the fun and sun, the unenlightened, the whirling, and the enlightened, the si chu si jian, those who are of the world, those who have surpassed the world, yeah, has already uh, transcended the world. Uh, they all what? They all respect the Buddha. They all honor the Buddha. Yeah, the Buddha is honored by all of them. Yeah, and that's why his name, world honored one. And with that, we wrap up part two of this series yeah, in celebration of Vesak this year. <coughs> so are you all world honored one? Not even sure whether we are honored at home. Huh? <laughs> even our own kampong don't know whether we are honored. Yeah, still want to talk about world. But there are people who are honored in the world, so isn't it? Yeah. They appear in one some magazine, such as yeah, Fox. <laughs> uh, one more. Fortune 500. They are also considered honored. <laughs> and then they appear in some programs called the what? Uh, like that. Some appear in the Grammy Award. Yeah, also honored, a lot of people honor them yeah, all over the world. 
than some what the uh, uh, academy award. Yeah. So these are world honored. This is not the world honored. This is a world worldly honor. <laughs> worldly honor. This year honor you. Next year maybe don't honor you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you treat them well, they honor you. Yeah. You say something wrong, they take away your award. <laughs> they don't honor you. Yeah. But the Buddha, being the world honored one, it's not that he was conferred a title. Yeah, titles that are conferred, given, can be taken away. Uh, so it is by virtue of his cultivation that he's known as the world honored one. But does it mean that everybody honor him? Does it mean that everybody respect him? Uh, not even the Buddha. Yeah, the Buddha in the various sutta says, in this world, there's no one who whom uh, everybody prays. Yeah, mm. but he is also known as the blameless one. Uh, hey, I thought Sufu just now say. Uh, so this is something interesting, uh, <clears throat> that he's worthy of the honor of the world doesn't mean everybody honor him. That he his actions, his body, speech, and mind is faultless, is blameless, doesn't mean that people cannot find fault. Uh, so if we want to become like the Buddha, Learn to take care of your body, speech, and mind so that your body, speech, and mind is faultless. Don't go and worry about people finding fault with you. Yeah, because that you cannot stop. There, will, there is bound to be someone who will come and want to find fault with you. And ironically, the better you are, yeah, the, the better you purify yourself, the, you do your best, the more people may want to find fault with you. Yeah. So if you worry about whether people find fault with you, you will never have peace. <clears throat> uh, you will never have peace. Mm. So, okay. Oh. Sometimes I wonder, have you wondered, uh, in the suttas, whether it's the Buddha giving a talk or uh, some people coming to ask the Buddha questions and then or ask the disciples question never mentioned about them drinking water or not huh? I find that when I give talks I drink the most water when I don't give talks I tend to fall sick because I fail to drink water by myself I don't drink water because I, I, I'm not so uh, don't know what uh, but when I give talks then eh, I can feel <coughs> need, need to drink water no, but in the suttas, never say, uh, uh, four, four yen, small, small, small. Then after that, it says, uh, four, her uh, equals way. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe because that is not so important. Uh, otherwise, you think about it, surely when the Buddha gives talks, maybe the Buddha shift a bit, like, uh, right? Then Buddha raise one hand, raise that hand. Then if you include all those things, then people may get confused. Eh, what, what is the meaning? Huh? Why the Buddha raised this hand? Huh? Huh? Oh, suddenly the Buddha drink water. Eh, the other day he didn't drink water. Why is there some significance? Uh, so maybe I think I think uh, when they <coughs> when they listen to the Dharma talk, they observe what is consequential, not what is inconsequential. Yeah. But sometimes when, we, <laughs> when you all go to Dharma talk, then you, you go and Pay attention to the inconsequential part. Oh, yeah, that, that venerable, uh, the pronunciation, wow, very strong, you know, the accent very strong. Who oh, actually go and pay attention to accent? Pay attention to content. <laughs> huh? Hmm. Shifu. Okay, uh, who? Shifu, uh, just now, yeah, during the talk, uh, MZ type a question in the chat. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Ask whether you can... Qing, is it uh, all sentient, all sentient oh. things? Okay. Then let me then show you your the Ru San Zhen Mian Mu. Okay. You know, in the Buddhas, in our in the Vinaya, there's a <laughs> there are a lot of rules. You know, there's a whole set of rules saying, uh, if someone wear a hat, don't give them teachings. If someone hold a staff, don't give them teaching. 
if a, if a person uh, is seated and you are standing, don't give them pitching. If a person is lying down and you are seated, don't give them pitching unless they are sick. <laughs> Uh, so cannot block your face. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, Mason's question, Sifu, may I clarify if Yu Qing refers to all sentient beings, uh, etc. Yu Qing Zhong Shen. Uh, so sometimes you see Yu Qing, sometimes you see Zhong Shen, right? Uh, so uh, typically they are synonymous. Uh, typically they are synonymous. But more specifically, Yu Qing refers to that which can feel, that which has the mind, uh, mental faculties that can, uh, that can experience. Uh, hence, name Yu Qing. Uh, uh, then, uh, Zhong Shen, <coughs> this Zhong Shen, uh, there are two interpretations. More recent ones, then it refers to all the different uh, beings. Yeah, Zhong Shen. Yeah. So, but um, if we look at some of the earlier texts, and commentaries, the Zhong Shen is actually referring to the Wu Zhong Shen. So the, the being that um, that comprises the Wu Zhong, and the Wu Zhong is actually referring to the five aggregates. Yeah, so that's one meaning, uh, Zhong Shen. Then another meaning is the Zhong Shen is referring to multiple birth. Uh, yeah, but in the Sutra, the earlier text, if using that meaning, then they will use Pu Te Ga Luo or Suo Qi Qi. Uh, but they're all actually talking about the same thing. Yeah. But why use different names? Uh, because to highlight different aspects of all these individuals. Uh, uh, like for example, here we can say, oh, there were multiple human beings attending the class. Yeah, we can say that. Yeah, all the different human beings attending to us. Uh, we can also say, oh, a group of attentive students. Uh, hey, attentive students are also, also human beings. Right? But when you add in the descriptor attentive and then student, uh, it, it brings up what is their role in this, in this setting. Uh, they are students. Yeah? And as students, then you can roughly have, imagine uh, what is, how is their behavior. They are listening. Yeah? And then further, attentively learning. Huh? So describing the same group, you'll find that the Buddha, the Arahants, they use different terms at different times yeah, to highlight different aspects of the same group. Mm. Huh? But more or less, uh, Yu Qing, Zhong Shen, they are synonymous. And oftentimes you see them together, Yu Qing, Zhong Shen. Mm. Okay. Uh. So below still have a few cover their face on. <laughs> uh, because they switched off the webcam. But I, I the other day I asked and uh, then some of them clarified they are actually on the route. Yeah. So exceptions, lah, huh? Exceptions. If they are outside, then you want them to turn on the webcam. Yeah. They turn on the camera, then they use data, halfway through they disconnected. Yeah. Uh, because their merits can only sustain so long. <laughs> they can only use, use their hearing to listen. Then you want them to manifest, their merits can only manifest so long. Their merits manifest halfway. <laughs> then they receive a, a message. Your data plan has been used up. To top up, press zero. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Uh, Quack, uh, where is Quack? Quack is one of my favorite students. Uh, <laughs> uh, she, she always Quack asks... Quack is saying about snakes. Huh? No, uh, no snakes. What about the rest? The rest, uh, which the rest? Before, Under that, that, uh, before that, you say all those, uh, all those so Chinese. Not I say, la, Buddha say. Buddha um, said, among, among all the sentient beings, there are those with two legs, four legs, many legs, and no legs. Oh. Uh, so this is one way to categorize according to how many legs the beings have. Yeah. Now, it may appear a bit odd to us, yeah? but basically by using by describing it that way, then it, you, you cover all kinds of sentient beings. And perhaps this was a common way to refer to different types of beings in the past. Huh? 
actually I I still not feeling well lah because I already one year after discharge I still not feeling well. Still not That's feeling well. Yeah. Discharge for what? Discharge for COVID nineteen ah? No, discharge for hospital last time one year already. One year already ah, mm. and one year for one year I've been saying. Then because of COVID nineteen, but I so so far I never tested yet lah. Before that I tested three yeah all negative lah. Oh. But now I didn't test ah because. I didn't test now la. Oh, then have you gone for vaccination? Oh, not yet, not yet. Ah, not yet la. No. You should be on priority list, what? Yeah, but I didn't go yet la. Oh, you, you But now you want to go, can you just walk in only? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For your category, advanced. Yeah, just walk in. Yeah, you just walk in. Just go in and say, "Give me." Then they okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> okay, wait ah. Uh, Edward asked, Sifu, in the first part, you mentioned San Ming Liu Tong. Why is it not San Ming San Tong? <laughs> Why not San Ming San Tong? Uh, because there are six kinds of different uh, psychic power. Yeah. But as far as the psychic power is concerned, only three of them uh, has is can be further upgraded to having wisdom uh, in tandem. Yeah. So uh, we have the uh, Tian Ming, Tian, uh, Tian Yan Tong, yeah? uh, Su Ming Tong, and then the Lou Jing Tong. Yeah? So also known as when it's fully, fully developed yeah, with wisdom, then it's uh, Tian Yan Ming. So that means the psychic vision that is the divine eye vision that has wisdom inside, knowing the cause and effect that leads to this, and also knows the full, uh, the full causality. Uh, that means com, uh, infused with wisdom. No, has wisdom within it. The su ming su ming tong, yeah. Also then upgraded to su ming ming. Uh, this is about knowledge of past life to present life. Yeah. Uh, just now was this life to future life. No? Uh, but Tian Yan Ming has many other things, but in particular, this part. Yeah? The second one, Su Ming Ming, is about related to past life action leading to this life, uh, but with wisdom. So there's clarity on exactly which one is leading to this particular result. Uh, no confusion about it. And the last one is Lo Jing Ming. So having Clear, uh, clear wisdom uh, with regards to nirvana. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, for example, there are those. My, my teacher in the in the Yoga Charm with Bhumi Sastra, he gave a very interesting explanation. He says, for example, there are people who say, Ah, I have finished my lunch. I'm free of suffering. I have attained nirvana. <laughs> So, so that is having delusion about nirvana. <laughs> yeah, you think like this is nirvana. Yeah, we all laugh. On a daily basis, we also have all kinds of this kind of thinking. Yeah, someone make us unhappy, then we think if that person is out of my sight, I'll be so happy. <laughs> huh? Or we think, wow, June sale. If I can buy that thing, see whether when the sale is coming. Wow, then we wait. Oh, yes, it's coming. Then you look at the counter. Wow, so happy. Then finally you buy it. Then you feel, wow, you have true happiness. That's also wrong. Yeah, so the Buddha knows truly and clearly what is the cessation of suffering. Yeah. And we may think, yes, oh, I also know what. No, 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 we, we, we still don't know. <laughs> we only know the knowledge of someone who knows. And even that knowledge, we half know how to know. And even if you know, we are not convinced yet. Deep down inside, there's one little girl, one little guy who says, mm, maybe, maybe not. Mm, hard to say, hard to say. So besides that, the psychic power, there are others. There's a psychic power of uh, clairvoyance, ability to read people's mind. There's an ability to... Uh, to, to uh, walk in the air, to travel, 
uh, at, uh, go through things. Yeah. Then there's a psychic power of manifestation. Yeah. But those uh, are not related to wisdom. No? Doesn't have the compounding of wisdom inside. No? So some Ming Liu Tong. Hmm. Okay. Any other question? Any other thoughts? Oh, oh Esther's mummy is listening to the Dhamma talk. Oh, uh, sitting on Esther. <laughs> so Esther is accumulating merit, being the vehicle for her mother to listen to Dhamma talk. <laughs> huh? what, a, what a loving sight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who else? Anybody? Oh yeah, today I never look, go through and see who is new. Huh? So Esther's mother and Esther attended SGC in person before, right? Uh, uh, who else haven't attended before? Uh, Leong Han. Who is Leong Han? Kya Kim, I think introduced before, right? Kya Kim? Uh, you must turn on your mic. Yeah. I introduced before. Time, yeah. That time, uh, I roughly can remember you. Uh, yeah. Lei Ling uh, is from Heart Sutra, I think. Uh, Jing Zhen also from Heart Sutra. But uh, I think Jing Zhen introduced before. Uh, Esther Tan manifests two bodies. One is the visual body, one is the audio body. So that's why there are two. Then Jolene, uh, Jolene should have introduced before. Mm. Okay, so if everybody is good, no questions, I have asked many times, then put your palms together. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Lao. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Lao. Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Hu Yuan Zhui Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Hu Yuan Zhui Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Shi Shi Chang Xing Hu Sha Dao. Shi Shi Chang Xing Hu Sha Dao. Amitabha. Chili.